8 p.m. and it's time for your daily market dose, Corporate Central, where we bring to you the everyday pulse of the corporate world and also highlight all of the market fluctuations taking place just for you. But first, let's take a look at the corporate world updates today. The Delhi High Court has ordered low fare airline SpiceJet to pay 380 crore rupees to its former promoter Kalanidhi Maran of the Sun Group and has asked to submit an affidavit of assets within four weeks of time. The ruling is a setback to the airline which had sub surprised with a four-fold increase in earnings to 106.8 crore rupees in the December quarter and comes amid a battle with aircraft lessers over payments. The High Court ruling on May 29th originates from a long-running battle between the Maran family and the current promoter Ajay Singh and SpiceJet over contractual obligations. Maran sued SpiceJet in 2017 for allegedly causing losses by failing to issue convertible warrants and preferences shares to him and his Akal Airways. The Adani Group is planning on acquisitions as a way to augment capacities in ACC Ambuja Cement in addition to the existing strategy of expanding through organic means. The ACC Ambuja Cement Combined said that it has planned to double capacity to 140 million tonnes by FY28 with a total capex of around 46,000 crore rupees, the cost being roughly equally split between the two companies. Meanwhile, auditor Deloitte flagged three transactions including recoveries from a contractor identified in the Hindenburg report as it issued a qualified opinion on the accounts of Adani Ports and Special Economic Zone. In the auditor's report for quarter 4 and FY23, Deloitte, Haskins and Cells highlighted Transactions with three entities, which the company said that were unrelated parties. The transactions included engineering, procurement and construction purchase contracts with a subsidiary of a party identified in the Hindenburg report. Lenders to the distressed Go First airline have rejected pleas by its management to release undrawn funds to the company, citing processes to be followed under the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code. Banks have informally conveyed to the airline that any release of funds will now be subject to approvals from all the lenders through a committee of creditors meeting later next week. Further, the resolution professional of Go First argued before the Delhi High Court saying that high courts should not entertain insolvency-related petitions. The High Court is hearing a batch of writ petitions filed by lessers seeking the court's intervention to direct DGCA to deregister the aircraft leased to go first. The matter was to be heard by the High Court on Thursday. Meanwhile, the airline urged DGCA not to suspend or cancel its air operator's permit as it will lead to airline's collapse. Kaushik Khona, CEO of the airline, said that it has applied for insolvency to address the company's debt-related matters. Go first further said that it has enough cash reserves to sustain operations. Vedanta Resources Limited, the parent of India-listed Vedanta, on Wednesday said that it has cleared all its debt obligations for the ongoing quarter, which were estimated to be $1.7 billion. The company's statement comes days after it pledged a 4.4% stake in VDL to Glencore International AG for a $250 million loan. It also said that it has repaid bonds worth $1.4 billion that were due in May and June, reducing its gross debt to $6.4 billion from $7.4 8 billion dollars at the end of March this year. In more news, government is reportedly set to decline Foxconn and Vedanta's joint venture request to receive incentives for manufacturing semiconductor chips in India. According to Bloomberg report, authorities are likely to inform the joint venture that it won't receive incentives for building 28 nanometer chips. The venture has not been able to meet the government requirements to receive funding as the project still lacks a technology partner and a manufacturing grade technology license for construction of 28 nanometer chips. Patanjali Foods on Wednesday said that its promoters plans to sell shares to institutional investors in June through qualified institutions placement and offer for sale for dilution of a 6% stake to meet minimum public shareholding norms of 25%. At present, the public shareholding in Patanjali Foods stands at 19.18%, which needs to be increased to a minimum of 25% to meet the minimum public shareholding norms. According to the rules, it is mandatory for a listed entity to have a minimum public holding of 25%. 
Himadri Specialty Chemical has acquired a 12.8% stake in Sikona Battery Technologies for 10.3 million Australian dollars that is 57 crore rupees in Indian currency enabling Himadri to enhance energy density of batteries with Sikona's high capacity silicon anode technology for lithium ion batteries. The transaction is part of Sikona's a Series A funding round. Himadri will be able to cater to nearly 250 gigawatt hours of cell manufacturing in India by 2030 with Sikona's technology delivering 50 to 100 percent higher capacity than conventional graphite anode. FarmEasy was supposed to raise equity of around 1000 crore rupees linked to its burn rate velocity. It has failed to do so after trying for a year and postponing its initial public offering. Negotiations are on to restructure terms or opt for capital raise. Goldman Sachs owns all assets as collateral. The, uni the unicorn borrowed a 2280 crore rupees from Goldman Sachs in August 2022 to pay off an earlier debt. FarmEasy had hoped to pay off 2000 crore rupees of its debt from the proposed IPO proceeds of 6,250 crore rupees. FarmEasy is said to be negotiating the terms of the loan to either restructure the debt or raise equity funding. Tech upskilling startup Scalar has acquired a Delhi-based edtech platform Pep Coding for an undisclosed amount. The acquisition is aimed at further ramping up growth and support across various business units including strategy, product design, B2B enterprise, operations and instructor organization Scalar. This is also the fourth acquisition for Scalar after Applied Roots, Coding Minutes and Coding Elements where the other edtech brands acquired over the last two years. Online grocery company Zepto on Wednesday elevated several key executives ahead of a planned stock market listing over the next two to three years. The move comes after the company announced Ramesh Bafna as its new chief financial officer in April. The management plans to take Zepto public in two to three years from now. Well, that was all about corporates. Now let's take a look at those market stocks that were in a spotlight today and also analyze the reason behind it. First up is the beginning of June uh, has been very disappointing for Coal India, the world's largest state-owned coal producing company. The share of Coal India fell 5% intraday and remained under pressure throughout before closing at 230 rupees uh, down 4.66%. The stock was the biggest loser of Nifty on Thursday. On Wednesday, the government announced plans to sell up to 3% stake in Coal India on June 1st and 2nd. This stake will be sold through OFS and the government will raise about 4,162 crore rupees. The floor price has been fixed at 225 rupees per share, a discount of 7% from Tuesday's closing. At present, the government's stake in the company is 66.13%, which will come down to around 63% after this OFL. Well, that was all about corporates. Now, let's take a look at those market stocks that were in spotlight today and also analyze the reason behind it. First up, we're talking about uh, Coal India. The beginning of June has been very disappointing for Coal India, the world's largest state-owned coal producing company. The share of Coal India fell 5% intraday and remained under pressure throughout before closing at 230 rupees, down 4.66%. The stock was the biggest loser of Nifty on Thursday. And on Wednesday, the government announced plans to sell up to 3% stake in Coal India on June 1st and 2nd. This stake will be sold through OFS and government will raise about 4162 crore rupees the floor price has been fixed at 225 rupees per share a discount of 7% from tuesday's closing at present the government stake in the company is 66.13% which will come down to around 63% after this ofs on thursday june 1st the stock of kotak mahindra bank saw a fall of more than 4% the stock touched a low of 1,926.20 rupees in the trading session. This stock was at number two in the list of most falling stocks in Nifty. The reason for the fall is that Kotak Mahindra Life has announced a bonus of 840 crore rupees for FY23. 6.5 lakh eligible policyholders of Kotak Life will be given this bonus amount for FY23, which is 24% more than FY22. Kodak Life started giving bonus in 2002 and has paid every year. Kodak Life is a subsidiary of Kodak Mahindra Bank. 
Shares of private sector bank South Indian Bank saw a rise of up to 11% on Thursday and the closing of the stock was also with a gain of 9.5%. The share touched a high of 19.10 rupees in intraday. The reason behind such a rise is that the bank has selected new candidates for the post of MD and CEO. RBI's approval will now be sought for the selected candidates. The term of the current MD and CEO of the bank, Murli Ramakrishnan, ends in September 2023. Ramakrishnan was appointed for three years on October 1st, 2020, but in March 2023, Ramakrishnan had decided not to extend his tenure due to personal reasons. Bajaj Auto, the maker of two-wheelers and three-wheelers, touched a lifetime high on Thursday, June 1st, and the stock closed with a strength of about 2%. In fact, on June 1st, the company announced its May auto sales figures, which have been better than market estimates. In May 2023, a total of 3.55 lakh units of Bajaj Auto have been sold, which is 29.1% higher than last year's 2.75 lakh units in May 2022. Two-wheeler sales in the domestic market have increased by 100%, that is more than two times. Bajaj Auto's two-wheeler sales in the domestic market have increased from 96,102 units to 1.95 lakh units. That's all tonight on Corporate Central, but before that, leaving you with some important corporate events and triggers which have the potential to make big market impacts. Globally, on June 1st, Europe's May CPI inflation figures were released and minutes of ECB's policy meeting were also released. And on June 2nd, board meeting of Mindacorp on fundraise to take place where equity and preferential issue will be discussed. Also, Coal India OFS opens for retail investors on June 2nd where quota of non-retail investors was filled more than one time. And ex state of dividends of Indus in Bank, Havels, Infosys, Page Industries is also on June 2nd. Also, demerger of Edelweiss financial wealth business to take place and Novama Wealth, the company formed after the demerger, will remain in the T2T segment. Globally, on June 2nd, US to report employment data for May and also Singapore markets to remain closed on June 2nd. With that, it's a wrap tonight on Corporate Central. But catch all the other detailed updates from the corporate world on Money9's website, www.money9.com. That's all from me. Take care and stay tuned to Money9.